You need to watch this if you struggle with staying warm when the power goes out. Before we dive in, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And make sure to hit that notification bell so you never miss a survival tip. Grab a chair and get comfortable because we're diving into one of the most quietly brilliant pieces of survival ingenuity to come out of the last century. I'm not talking about a weapon or a secret code. I'm talking about something you'd find in your grandmother's garden shed. Think about the worst winter you've ever experienced. Now strip away your central heating, your electric blankets, and your insulated walls. Replace it with a bombed-out building, a cellar flooded with icy water, or a farmhouse with every window shattered by concussions from the front. This was the daily reality for millions across Europe and Asia during the World Wars, with coal and wood rationed for the war effort, often impossible to find, and electricity a distant memory, people faced a simple, brutal equation find heat or freeze to death. In that absolute scarcity, they rediscovered an ancient technology, refined through sheer desperation, and turned simple clay flower pots into a thermal lifeline. This is the forgotten story of the clay pot heater, a lesson in radiant heat and human resilience that every serious student of survival needs to understand. The desperation for heat forced a return to ancient principles. When the coal trucks stopped running and the last splinter of firewood had turned to ash, people had to look at what was left. And in countless homes, barns and refugee shelters, what was left were clay pots. Terracotta, the same material used for thousands of years to store water and grain, possesses a unique property. It is a phenomenal thermal mass. It absorbs heat slowly, holds on to it tenaciously, and releases it as a gentle, radiant warmth over a very long period. Our ancestors knew this using heated stones and earth in bedding. The twentieth-century crisis required a standardized, replicable application of this old knowledge. The goal wasn't to create a blazing inferno that wasted precious fuel and was dangerous in damaged structures. The goal was to create a steady, enduring and safe warmth that could take the lethal edge off a freezing room, protect a child from hypothermia or keep a water jar from becoming a block of ice. This shift from convective heat, warming the air which quickly escapes, to radiant heat, Warming objects and people directly was the critical innovation. The wartime flower pot stove was a study in efficient design. The standard build, passed through communities and soldier networks, was elegant in its simplicity. The core component was a metal container for the heat source. This could be a small cast iron stove if one was incredibly lucky but more often it was a converted tin can, an old coffee pot, or a perforated metal bucket. Inside this would be the meagre precious fuel, a few lumps of rationed coal, charcoal briquettes made from scavenged wood, or even tightly rolled paper and sawdust logs that would smolder for hours. This metal firebox was then placed inside a larger clay flower pot, which was inverted over it, creating a sealed combustion chamber with only a small hole at the top, the old drainage hole, acting as a flue. Often, a second, even larger pot would be placed over the first, with bricks or stones separating them, creating a layered thermal battery. The terracotta would begin to heat, first to the touch, then growing uncomfortably hot. But that was the point. The clay wasn't just getting hot, it was becoming the heat source itself. Radiant heat from terracotta became a silent, life-saving warmth. Here's where the physics become survival. A traditional open fire heats the air around it, 
in a drafty broken building that warm air rises and is instantly lost through cracks in the roof. It's inefficient and fleeting. The glowing terracotta pot, however, works like the sun. It emits infrared radiation, a direct, penetrating warmth that heats the solid objects in its path. The floor, the walls, your body, a blanket. You feel the warmth on your skin even when the air feels cold. This radiant heat is what made the system so effective. A single setup, fed with a handful of fuel, could radiate life-saving warmth for an entire night. Families would huddle in the sphere of its influence, sleep rotating around it, dry, damp socks against its sides. In field hospitals and aid stations, small pot heaters were placed under cots to provide direct, steady warmth to shock victims without filling the air with smoke. The clay's slow release meant no dangerous flare-ups, no sudden bursts of flame to give away a position at night, and a much reduced risk of igniting nearby debris, a constant terror in homes filled with makeshift repairs and scattered belongings. This historical technique offers a critical blueprint for modern resilience. So why does a pile of clay pots matter to us now, beyond the history lesson? Because it embodies a fundamental principle of sustainable survival efficiency through thermal mass. In a prolonged, grid-down scenario, fuel will be your most precious commodity. Wasting it on inefficient, fast-burning fires is a recipe for disaster. The clay pot method teaches you to maximize every single BTU. You can apply this principle today without a flower pot. Think of a metal drum lined with fire brick, a stone enclosure round a rocket stove, or even a pile of heated river rocks placed safely in a pit. The core idea is to use a dense natural material to capture, store, and slowly radiate the heat from a small focused fire. It's about working with physics, not just fighting the cold. Storing a few large, unglazed terracotta pots in your garage or shed is a low-cost, zero-tech insurance policy. Paired with the knowledge of how to build a small, clean-burning, internal firebox, you have a system that can transform a handful of twigs or a few charcoal briquettes into hours of stable, ambient warmth. This isn't a quaint folk remedy. It's battlefield-tested thermodynamics. It represents the moment when human ingenuity, backed against the wall, strips a problem down to its absolute essentials and finds an elegant answer in the very earth beneath our feet. The people who used these systems weren't just trying to get comfortable. They were engaged in the daily silent work of staying alive. Their solution demands our respect and our understanding. If this deep dive into applied survival history resonates with you, if you believe that the past holds the raw data for future resilience, then you need to be part of this community. Help us keep these vital lessons from fading into obscurity. Subscribe to Warfront Survival and hit the bell icon. We're here to move beyond the textbooks and bring you the usable, gritty truth of human endurance. Share this video with anyone who takes preparedness seriously. Because when the temperature drops, history isn't just a story. It's a manual. Stand ready. And